You know, I'm thinking about starting a new dating app in Prague. I think I'll call it Checkmate. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. We're continuing our series on Spring from COVID. And our guest this week, well, she is helping business owners like you become even more aesthetically pleasing. This is Small Business Celebration. Join us as we learn from successful business owners and successful business leaders about who they are, from where their business has grown, what they have learned, and where their successful business is going. I'm your host, Michael I. Roberts, and we're gonna learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Welcome to Small Business <laughs> Celebration, and our guest today is Jennifer Tugas Genova, the co-owner of Allure Aesthetics. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thank you for having me, Michael. And for visioners who don't know who you are, who are you, and what is it that you do? My name is Jennifer Tugas Genova. I am a board-certified dermatology nurse practitioner in Bakersfield, California. I am also co-owner of Allure Aesthetics, as Michael had said. And I do all things skin. We are here, if you're listening to this program, we are here actually in one of her offices where there's the big chair, there's the big bright light, there's all kinds of other equipment in here. And, but you are in a fascinating and profitable industry because people are interested in how they look. You think? Oh, well, you know. <laughs> Especially those ones on TV. Oh, yeah. And don't talk about those on, on YouTube. Oh, my gosh. They're the <laughs> worst. Oh. But you have a fascinating business because it's more than just how people look. It's what's, it goes more than being skin deep to use a cliche. I like that. <laughs> yes. Tell visioneers, business owners, what you can do for them because this is a very important business and a very important service you provide. So I can do so many different things in the field of dermatology, but most importantly, um, help you become your best you and how you feel and how you look uh, daily okay so when we're feeling run down as business owners which happens a lot <laughs> lack of sleep sure there's a lot of things aesthetically we can do just to perk you up a little bit okay and then on top of that we also can take care of all your skincare needs um like dermatology your skin checks your skin exams preventative especially with skin cancer, because mm. it's so prominent in our geographical area here. Right, well, it, it doesn't matter where you are in California, the sun mm. is a big fan. It sure is, <laughs> specifically in Kern County though too, right. but all over the state of California. But we have a lot of, you know, agriculture, petroleum field, a lot of, uh, sunbathers still unfortunately <laughs> even though we're trying to educate i know you wear sunscreen michael you told me spf 70. there we go neutrogena there I we love go it. except i don't need it so much when i'm indoors yeah weird that you still should wear it because driving in your vehicle oh. you get a lot of sun exposure especially on one side that left side that left side mm -hmm. But one of the things that you also just touched on is a bit, your ability to help the business owner who's feeling a little bit run down, or at least looks a little bit run down. Mm -hmm. What can you do to help them in that area? Oh, there's so many things in the field of aesthetic dermatology now. So if you wanna do a conservative approach, mm -hmm. um, we have services like microneedling, microdermabrasion, facials. What, 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 what are those things? <laughs> so <laughs> microdermabrasion is a type of facial that you can receive where it actually um, debrides the outside layer of the skin mm -hmm. and just refreshes you. Okay. And then microneedling is more of 
um, not just preventative, corrective, where we have a little pen mm -hmm. that looks like a pen, okay. sounds like a tattoo, but it has little micro needles all in that oh. penetrate the skin and produce collagen. Because as we get older, we lose our collagen. Mm. And not only do we lose our collagen, as we get older and if we're tired and a little run down, we're gonna lose our collagen and our growth factors and our hyaluronic acid. Hmm. So there's a lot of science behind it as well. And I'm sure this is only for men, or only for women, correct? Some think. <laughs> <laughs> But no, we have a lot of male um, men in our practice. Mm -hmm. um, and some prefer like a quick fix, and that would be with your neurotoxins like Botox um, or fillers. Mm -hmm. And then I like to recommend all the things. I do all the things. It's your largest <laughs> organ of your body. You right. really need to take care of it. Mm. And it goes beyond just taking care of the outside of you. It's internal as well. So with our high 100s that we've had, right. been blessed with, we're leaving for the coast tomorrow, so I'm excited. <laughs> uh, you have to drink a lot of water. You right. have to take care of yourself. Mm. You have to exercise. You have to eat clean. All of that is part of it. All the things. All the things. You know, uh, the skin, there's a lot of inflammatory conditions that can mm. be linked to just diet alone. Right. So. You also have something, in fact, it's what? three or four doors down from here, that uh, you also have massage services here. We do. As well. that, that, I would guess, is very popular. Very popular. <laughs> so our certified massage therapist, Maribel, has been with me since day one of Allure. She's amazing. She has miracle magic hands. That's what I say. Wow. <laughs> and a lot of her clientele, um, as small of a world as it is, Bakersfield, uh, I used to work with in the hospital, a lot of the physicians and the nurses. So wow. we're all connected. You're not originally from Bakersfield, are you? I am not. Because <laughs> <laughs> where did you originally come from? I'm from the exact opposite coast, East Coast. So I'm from Massachusetts, born and raised Chicopee, Massachusetts. And that is right next door to Boston, right? <laughs> about an hour and 20 minutes away-ish. But and Massachusetts distance, that's like a day trip. It really is. You get on the Mass Pike, you can do one end of Massachusetts to the next. Wow. <laughs> All in a few hours, yeah. And what brought you to Bakersfield? So I was recruited during our first pandemic, uh, H1N1, the swine flu. And so they were recruiting ICU nurses at that time. And I worked at Memorial Hospital outside in the tents. Oh. So then I said, you can't beat the winters here. <laughs> Our, Little did you know. <laughs> 12 years later, here I am. <laughs> and one of the things about this that's absolutely charming, at least I think it is anyway, is where is your husband from? So my husband grew up in Framingham, Massachusetts. And, and where did you meet him? In Bakersfield, <laughs> California. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to leave Massachusetts, come to Bakersfield in order to meet your husband who also was from Massachusetts. That's correct. And we both have family there still. <laughs> wow, that, that sounds, that, that, how can visioneers get in touch with you? You can get in touch with me uh, at Allure Aesthetics. We are located off of Ming Avenue. Our number is 661-847-9920. What, what was that number again? It's 661-847-9920. And website? And our website is myalorespa.com. We also have an Instagram. It's White Coat Chronicles. So I just posted per demand <laughs> uh, a surgical video of a, a cyst excision, a pilar cyst on the scalp. So we had a lot of papaholics out there loving that one. Sounds good. And if you enjoy a small business celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify and leave a comment. We love the comments that visioneers like you give us. In fact, that's one of the reasons we're here talking with Jennifer today. And when we come back, we're gonna talk about the friendly competition and how you can use authentic training to help you grow your business. Hi, I'm John Busby with Team Busby. And over the years, many people have asked me, what price ranges do you sell? As you can see at Team Busby, we sell all price ranges, 80,000 to 2 million. It's a seller's market. If you're thinking remotely of selling your home, 
now's the time to sell it. There's buyers that are on the fence, some of them not even thinking about selling. When I show them the values of today's market, they say, oh my gosh, I should put on the market now. When you call my team, Team Busby, you get a voice, not a voicemail. 410-SELL, 410-7355. We're here with Jennifer Tugas Genova, the co-owner of Allure Aesthetics, and our visionary question comes from Paulette who asks, I keep hearing over and over that education and training is an effective marketing tool. But the market is flooded with so-called experts. What are you doing to stand out in the marketplace? I think it's approach. Approach has a lot to do with education. Mm. And, you know, understanding that we're human, we're going to make mistakes. Mm. And I'm very honest, um, anybody who has seen our lives previously, <laughs> I like sure. to keep it real at <laughs> right? all times. Sure. And I think that relatability. Mm. And I feel if you can get to that point, especially with education and teaching, mm. and hold a level of respect as well, while hearing yourself in a certain <laughs> manner too, because okay. it can be intimidating different personalities. Right. But just sticking to that and focusing on the strengths rather than weaknesses. And I like to point that out in my trainings a lot. We do, I do the sandwich method. Okay, what's that? So for every negative that I have to point out, I sandwich it with two positives. Oh, okay. So um, in the field of training, we do have to point out certain things like aseptic technique or lack thereof, and you can make helpful, friendly suggestions, and then end it with two positives. Mm, okay. This sounds like you prefer quality mm -hmm. over quantity. Yes. How did you discover this in your practice and why is it important? So I discovered this when I first um, entered the field of dermatology. Mm -hmm. um, when you work for a large practice, mm -hmm. you have a large influx of patients. Sure. And so at my previous office, I was seeing um, a amount of patients, let's just say for instance, 35 to 40 a day. A day? A day. Holy cow. So that's, that's less than 15 minutes a, per, a patient. And so I'd come in early right? and I would stay late okay. because I still wanted to deliver that quality, that education. Right. And then when I was given the opportunity to open and run my own practice, now I'm my own boss. Right. That number was cut in half. Now I can sit down, not have to come in early or stay late to catch up on charting mm -hmm. and take the time and deliver that quality. And so now it's solely finding a happy medium between it. You can do both. You can have a quantity of patients and deliver that quality at the same time. But insurance, the way the current insurance structure is set up, in order to be profitable, you have to have a significant headcount coming in through the door. How do you manage that and make that work? You got it. So <laughs> they come in and they see how thorough we are in this practice. Mm. Then they book other services. Mm. They know they're going to get the consistency throughout Allure Aesthetics. There it is. So they will start off as a medical patient and end up as an aesthetic and vice versa. They'll start as an aesthetic and wind up as a medical. So it's full circle. There it is. Now, one of the things that you had alluded to in the first segment is the so-called competition. And for, for those of us that are a little bit older, we call it friendly competition, yes. as, as it were. And this is something that you had to initially struggle with yourself when you started your company, started your business. And take us very briefly through that process of the so-called competition. So I'd like to refer to it as friendly competition too. Sure. It's not always the case, but you want to hope for the best. Right. It was really difficult, I'm not going to lie. Um, in the beginning, when you start a business and you're growing and you grow pretty quickly and rapidly in the community, I think it can be intimidating. Mm. And so... A little bit of jealousy, I'm sure, too. Uh, I'm sure there's part of that too. <laughs> and so um, struggling with that in the beginning and doing the right thing morally and ethically and staying sound, 
it all comes out in the end and patients know you they find you mm -hmm. um, it was a conflict of interest I couldn't tell my patients where I was going and just staying true to yourself and then they eventually will find you and they will tell their friends and their family and they see you doing the right thing mm. they see that they didn't get an email from you or a text from you trying to recruit them to your new business mm. and I think that is um, what led to the success. Right. You know, because you, you just brought up a fear that a lot of business owners have, is they hire an employee that is very, very good, mm -hmm. and then that employee leaves and opens up a new business that is their direct competition. How were you able to go through and navigate through that so that you were able to keep your integrity and at the same time grow a very blossoming and fruitful business? I think, honestly, it was trying to deflect the negativity. Mm. If we feed on negativity, it's going to affect your practice. Mm. And moving on from that and knowing that there is enough in this for everybody. Mm. Being your own competitor, making your own brand. Mm. What sets you differently in your business as opposed to the other businesses that are similar like to you? And I think I found my niche with that. But this hasn't all been wine and roses. No, 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 no. <laughs> you had a very challenging conversation with your partners mm -hmm. here, especially when COVID broke. Yes. What happened, and, and take us through this, because what, what you experienced is something that may not specifically apply, but has generally, I've heard over and over and over again in other circumstances with other partners and businesses. Well, we were in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. So I was an ICU nurse of 10 years and I had been out for five years. Mm. We had such a shortage of trained ICU nurses. Right. And without a doubt in my mind, I already had it made up. And that can be a little dangerous sometimes with me because once I have that in my head, there's no convincing me otherwise. Right. We all take an oath as nurses, as nurse practitioners, as physicians, as physician assistants. And I swore to that oath. Our community needed the assistance. There were brand new nurses at the bedside. How frightening in ICU, how scary for them, scary for everybody. They did an amazing job. We had some amazing leaders during this pandemic. Um, but with the experience that I had, I felt like I could go back in and assist. Mm. And so it did cause a little bit, could have been conflict um, because I had to take a back seat on the business a little bit. Mm. And so I tried to spread myself out throughout and so I had to cut back a little bit here. Mm. And as being a co-owner, instead of thinking as business oriented, um, I tried to kind of keep also a happy medium of that as well. Right. And so presenting that was pretty difficult to my business partners and they were very supportive. My husband at first um, was not. <laughs> sure, okay. And then was in the end. I think it was more the scare tactic, not understanding. And once I broke it down to him, I, I just said, I've been around infectious disease my whole life. You've never contracted anything. We have the same routine. The only thing is, this is a different infectious disease that we're dealing with now. Right. And when I put it into perspective like that, he's like, oh yeah, it's five years can, you know, you'll forget. She does have a routine when she used to work in ICU. She'd take all of her clothes off in the garage, go right into the shower, goes right on sanitary cycle. So we've always had that routine. I think it was more the fear of the unknown. Mm. So we did not know what COVID was all about. Right. And I'd be a liar if I said I wasn't afraid. Right. I was. But I knew that I had dealt with similar situations and there was a need in our community. And the nurses and physicians that I've worked with for all these years have also contributed to the success of my business. We are all very loyal to each other. And I'm just getting the goosebumps talking about it right now because it's, I wouldn't be where I am right now in the business without that support. And so 
when there's a need, I'm gonna be there too. It goes full circle just like everything else. And we'll be right back. The reason we're here with Jennifer Togas Genova here at Allure Aesthetics is because of a visionary question from a visionary just like you. And a lot of it comes from the digital currency that you visionaries are giving us on social media. And we really appreciate you liking our posts, saving our posts, and sharing our posts because you are giving us the digital currency we need to help you grow a strong and profitable business. So please continue to enjoy the social media offerings that we have and like our posts, save our posts, and share our posts. And reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. I'm here with Jennifer Tugas Genova, the co-owner of Allure Aesthetics, and our visionary guest of the segment comes from Joel, who asks, I'm finding that managing my Instagram and social media accounts can become very overwhelming. What do I look for in hiring somebody to take care of it for me? So this is a great question. <laughs> it's not an easy one. Because I have battled with this as well. Okay. If we're looking to expand and grow, we know the world of social media is everything right now. Right. And it's free. Ish. Ish. Unless you have to hire somebody. Right. If you want to utilize yourself and your staff to the fullest, mm -hmm. what I did is I didn't hire anyone. Okay. I had my staff alternate on a schedule for postings. Ah, so you're using the staff you've already hired. Correct. Okay. And we all participate in that, including myself. Ah. So it's fair across the board. Every day, every work day, uh -huh. there is someone assigned to posting. Nice. And you've taken it a step further, but you have also hired an outside person to help you with your social media. Correct. Because you've got this whole system with your staff. What made you take that next step and hire an outside person? So the advertising behind it, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. The design. So when we're doing, if you look on our Instagram page, you'll what's your, see. What's your Instagram page? <laughs> we're Allure Aesthetics Bakersfield. Right, okay. So you'll see that each post is designed. Mm. And each post is specific about one of the treatments that we serve. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do our before and afters as well, but the design portion of it, that's the one that takes a lot of time and a lot of perfecting. And how did you find the right person to help you? She kind of stumbled upon in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we might be able to meet her later too. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I met her through mutual friends. Okay. It turns out we had way more in common than we realized. Okay. The scapular that I wear around my neck every day, uh -huh. uh, faith is a lot to us. Right. She gave me this at the beginning of the pandemic when I went back to ICU. Right. I've worn it every single day since then. Mm. We just had a lot of common ground. Right. And I found that her husbands did too, so that always helped. <laughs> sure. There was a little bromance going on between <laughs> them. Nice. So Erica and I could get business done. Right. At the same time having her husbands, just socializing and having fun. Part of this too is what you alluded to earlier, which is creating your own brand. Correct. Why is that so important? What makes you different? What makes mm. your practice stand aside from the other ones? Mm. And I think by creating your own brand, people want to see that. They want to see something different. They want to mm. see what sets you apart from all the others. Right. And again, I think that has a lot to do with trying to come together as a community. I've been really big with spreading community over competition. Mm -hmm. I have some amazing medical aesthetic owner friends and we all group together in the community. So if one runs out of one supply or vice versa, we lend it out. Uh, there's been times where we've had busy days and we ran out of Botox or some wow. of the other ones run out and then they will have an employee swing by and we'll lend it out to them. And that I think is a beautiful thing. There mm. is no need for competition because everybody can have their own brand. That is the key point right there. 
<laughs> One of the things you also mentioned was about competing against yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I've struggled with a lot because, you know, I, the, the podcast and YouTube world is a very competitive business. Mm -hmm. And trying to keep up with the Joneses is kind of important or do better than the right. Joneses. And yet you've somehow been able to manage this. I've always pretty much had that in nature. Mm. I like to set goals. I like to accomplish goals. I like to challenge myself mm -hmm. um, in all aspects of life. So whether that's my personal, my professional, um, even just, you know, uh, athletic wise, I've just joined a new thing called Legree and it's been very challenging. What's I will Legree? It's like Pilates pretty much on steroids. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> the owners over there are amazing. They're small business owners as well at Level LVL and I don't like to give up. So that's one thing I think everybody will see with me. I like to set realistic goals for myself but I also like to accomplish those. Mm. And having come from where I did in Chicopee, Massachusetts. Um, I looked up to my father so much. He came from absolutely nothing. Mm. Put himself through college, working full time, two jobs. I've always done the same. So I've never ever asked for help. And that's probably something I could work on a little bit. <laughs> but I like to set the bar high for myself and I hold my standards that way. You mentioned a little bit before we were recording that in the last in the last segment you had mentioned about the the challenges in the ICU mm -hmm. and the loyalty. Got a little tearful there too. I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> but you made a very important point off camera that I that I wanted to iterate. Mm -hmm. They come back. Mm -hmm. They come back and they support and they'll find you. Um, loyalty is everything in the ICU. We depend on each other. The ICU is extremely traumatic and seeing that trauma somehow just has this bond that's unbreakable. In fact, I had um, shirts made, t-shirts made while we were in there about ICU and the, our unbreakable bond. And we had nurses come out of retirement. We had nurses traveling two hours away to join us in our ICU at our hospital with no questions asked. Just the most selfless beings I've ever experienced working with or having a bond with like that. And I want to say my entire staff is like that as well. I mean, yes, it does take some time to build your staff and have the right fit. There's a right fit for everyone. Um, that's all part of your brand. So, but getting us to a level that we're at right now makes it all worth it. All of the sacrifice, all the blood, sweat, and tears, which were a lot, <laughs> and a lot of, you know, a lot of tears along the way and frustration, but to be where we're at right now and have my st staff come in with a smile on their face, walking through that door every morning and saying good morning and just happy to be here means everything to me. If visioneers want to get in touch with you, mm -hmm. how do they do that? <laughs> well, you can contact me um, through Allure, 661-847-9920. You can DM me. I have a lot of patients and a lot of visioneers that will DM me at white coat. So it's white underscore coat underscore chronicles on Instagram all day. I'm pretty good about my DMs too, unless I'm, you know, doing a mental health break, which will be tomorrow. I'm going to Morro Bay, but I do usually get back within a timely manner, about 24 hours or so. And there's lots of questions and I'm happy if time allows, for consults and things like that. Jennifer, this has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me. And we'll be right back with my final thought. Hi, I'm John Busby with Team Busby. And over the years, many people have asked me, what price ranges do you sell? As you can see at Team Busby, we sell all price ranges, 80,000 to 2 million. It's a seller's market. If you're thinking remotely of selling your home, now's the time to sell it. 
There's buyers that are on the fence, some of them not even thinking about selling. When I show them the values of today's market, they say, oh my gosh, I should put on the market now. When you call my team, Team Busby, you get a voice, not a voicemail. 410-SELL, 410-7355. My wife got me a new bookcase here for the office and I was moving things around and moving some books around when I came across my old Cub Scout handbook. And Cub Scouts was a great time in my childhood and there are things in this book that are signed off by my mom and some signed off by my dad. And when I first opened up the book after all these years, I opened it up to the Cub Scout motto which is, do your best. Now, I don't know if you're like me or not, but there are days where I feel like I'm in a hamster in a wheel that's going around and around and around and around and around and never seeming to accomplish anything or getting anywhere. Or there are those days where your good is really, really good and days where your best just isn't good enough. Well, keep doing your best. Keep working on it. Keep improving yourself. Keep improving your business. Keep improving those around you if you can because in the end in the long run your best will be good enough i hope you enjoyed our conversation today with jennifer togas genova of allure aesthetics and i hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business and we'll see you here again next week nice yeah well one of the things that blah, 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 and um, and when we come, this see, this is the great. Some of this may even show up on the outtakes. <laughs>